Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a process that I use to create this uh, pencil test or this rough animation. Okay, so um, just to summarize everything, I started with a path of action sketch, and I just kind of roughed this out and did a whole bunch of copying and pasting, and you'll see that in the, in the time lapse. I went back over it with a thumbnail layer, so I basically went in and I traced on top, and then after I was really pleased with all that and I got the timing right, then I went back in over it with a rough sketch. And with a rough sketch, um, I pretty much buttoned down what I wanted the movement to look like. And um, yeah, let's kind of go over this. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna try to add some commentary and we'll see what happens. Um, but I'm setting up my file and I've made a bunch of layers. I added a color card at the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up um, all of my colors and I'm just gonna start to rough in like a standard bouncing ball and then what I'll eventually do is to start to move some of these things around so that way it'll kind of look like it's in the path of where a ball is gonna be bouncing so at this point I have the location of a lot of these sketches so what I want to do is to think about where's the center line for each of the spheres and since I'm going to be focusing on overlapping action you know why not go and create a skirt that's going to go around each of these balls and then of course um, I'm going to put some kind of an antenna that's on top of each of them so I'm just trying to get a general idea of where some of these things are going so in this part of the clip what I'm doing is I'm going in frame by frame and notice that I'm animating on ones so I'm not skipping a frame but I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna trace each of the sketches that I made because what I'd like to do is to go back and actually play the animation and see how it goes. All right, so now's a good time to go and select all of my keyframes and I'm gonna right click and go to the exposure and set them to two because you, know, you don't need to draw 24 frames a second, you can animate on twos. So now what I can do is set it up so my stop is at the end of my animation and then I can watch this. All right, definitely there's a lot of room for improvement. So let's speed things up right now. All right, so let's get all these keyframes back on ones by going into the exposure. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use onion skin this time and I'm gonna start moving some keyframes around. Make sure you pay attention to the timeline because you can start to see that I'm shifting some of the keyframes around. In Toon Boom Harmony, you can just hit the plus sign and then delete the excess space and then go in and draw. Also notice that I've got the onion skin on and I have a pretty big sample. So I've at least got four or five drawings ahead and four or five drawings behind. Okay, there is a quick test animation. It looks like I'm in a little bit of trouble here because one of my keyframes is at a sequence. But you know, this is, this is normal stuff that's gonna happen as you try to do pose to pose animation. So just be aware of that. All right, so I've skipped forward just a little bit because I took a little break. But at any rate, I'm pretty pleased with what's happening. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my original sketch and with all of my keyframes, which are currently on twos, notice them in the, in the timeline, I'm gonna go back in and rough in the skirt that's around the ball. So now do a quick motion test, see how it's going. And now I can go and turn off that path of action sketch and go back in and draw in all of the skirts and I could do the in-between action. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sketch everything so it kind of flows smoothly. All right, so a little bit more sketching, but what I wanna do is to play this in real time and then kind of briefly discuss what the, the reality of animation is. So notice that I'm watching this in real time over and over and over again. And what I'm doing is, is I'm looking at multiple areas and I'm thinking about does it work, does it not work? And if I, it doesn't work, I'm gonna go back and fix those other areas. But you know, you need to methodically watch this stuff over and over and over again, okay? So let's go back in. So assuming that you're pleased with what's happening right now, like kind of like I am, I'm gonna go in and add this other um, element that's on my little character. 
So I'm going to put a little antenna on each of them and I'm scrubbing back and forth and I'm doing a little bit of in-betweening. I'm also, sometimes I'm turning on the previous layer or the, the, the path of action sketch layer that's underneath. So that way I can get an idea. Notice over there, I just went, I ran through the animation a handful of times just to see it work. You can tell that I'm erasing right now. So I'm fixing the mistakes that I made. Okay, went back in. I went and looked at it one last time. And then at this point, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. All right, so let's play some of this in real time because it's so misleading. When you see everything played at eight times the normal speed, um, you know, you really cannot grasp how long it takes to do this. Now, you got to keep in mind that I've been drawing for most of my life. You know, I'm in my 40s right now at the recording of this video. And, you know, just look at how long it takes for me to go and do this. So if you're an emerging artist, don't give up <laughs> it takes time but also notice that you know just like you you know even though I have a ton of practice just like you I also struggle and it takes time to do something and to make it nice so you know just uh, just be aware of that now let's just quickly go over and review a, f a handful of topics that we covered in the video a lot of what I did at the beginning was to animate straight through and then I went back later and moved keyframes around and I did some in-betweening. So that's the difference between straight through and pose to pose animation. In order to do that, some of the other things I did was at the beginning I focused on drawing one frame at a time and then I doubled the exposure. So definitely give that a shot because after you double the exposure and then you play it a bunch of times, you really get a sense of the timing. And once you know, once it feels right, like you should just look at the animation and it should just click automatically and it should make sense, okay? Make sure that timing is right, really scrutinize your work, go talk to other people, have them look at the work, and I think you're gonna be in good shape. Then finally, um, you know, one of the other things we talked about is how like in other layers of the animation, so I pretty much, I, I buttoned down where the ball would be. After that, I went and put in a center line. After that, I put in, you know, the fabric that goes around the ball. And then finally, I did the little antenna and I didn't do any details until the end. Like you really need to work in separate passes to focus on shapes, no details, you really, you gotta bake the cake before you decorate it. All right guys, I really hope this was a helpful video. Definitely, if there's anything in this video that will benefit you, please steal it and make it your own. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.